Hi, I'm Millie. And I'm Adrian. Today on an oddly lit episode of Bloody Mary. As Venezuelan President Chavez dies, we'll be looking at QN's own leadership battle. We'll be heading to Library Square to find out what you think of this year's SU election. And Batman pops up in Yorkshire. This is Bloody Mary. Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez has died after battling cancer for two years. Chavez was 58 and led Venezuela for the last 14 years. The sharp-tongued president was known for his socialist agenda, having nationalised most of the nation's industries. He was also prone to criticise Western policies. The head of Venezuela's Congress will assume interim presidency before an election is held within the next 30 days. Chavez is likely to be succeeded by his vice president, Nicolas Maduro. As the election seasons draw to a close, the Mile End hustings took place on the 4th of March. Candidates running across all positions were grilled by each other and the audience on their policies and reasons why they should be elected. The four-hour-long event concluded with questions for candidates running for president. However, one question regarding political alignment sparked controversy when presidential candidate Patrick Ford claimed to be centrally aligned. After jeers from various members of the audience, the debate continued, ending with candidates quizzing each other. With candidates eager to make the most of the last few days before voting, we headed down to Library Square to ask passers-by what they thought of this year's election. Hi there, what's your name? Hi, I'm Raj Chaitanya, I'm a student trustee here. Excellent, and do you think this year's elections have gone well? Yeah, I think there's a great, you know, good turnout in um, Library Square and it's really innovative to be seeing the floor being used as a Advertising chalking space. it up. Yep. Yeah, chalking it up. Have you voted in the SU elections so far? Not yet, but we're going to. Yeah. Excellent. I voted because I wanted to get out of the way because everybody in Library Square wants to bombard you with stuff, as is exactly what we're doing. So what do you make of the candidates? To be honest, um, I'm not really sure. Like yesterday, I got sort of a bit bombarded by about three different groups of people, yeah. and all I really got from it was them sort of slagging off the other group. So, kind of speaking to students on campus, do you feel like um, the elections are something that is in the forefront of students' minds and how can we kind of make students more aware of the elections? It's an interesting matter. Um, there's obviously the 200 to 500 or people are already involved in student politics and we have a turnout of about two and a half thousand. So beyond that, we are attracting some students. However, in a campus of 15,000, I think we do have a lot more work yeah. to do. Yeah. And what do you kind of look for in an SU? I mean, do you know what they do? Do you know what their role is? Um, I personally, I don't, there are so many different roles that have been that are up for election at the moment. I, I don't think enough people care. In my time here, nothing's changed at all. Sport is still underfunded, mm -hmm. isn't it? Uh, and the union doesn't represent the media properly. Like there are, there are things that are still the same from when we first started as freshers. I think it's tried very hard, as with any institution. It's like a big ship, it takes time to turn. But I think uh, the SU has made good progress this year. And Babs, Babs Williams was the president this year. Do you think he's done well? Are you sort of happy with what he's done? Uh, Babs has done an excellent job. We've been working really close with Babs and Ellen. They've been a great help. I don't think he's done anything particularly good enough to make yeah. me like him or bad enough to make me actively dislike him. And there seems to be um, a lot of students who are running that kind of group together and sort of form these like slates. And do you think that's a positive thing or do you think sometimes it can be a little bit unfair for individuals that aren't so well connected within the kind of student environment? People who do that tend to be people who've been involved in politics yeah. before. Like, Big mm, names. Yeah, exactly. So then it can put people off yeah. who just might want to stand but think, oh, I don't have a slate. Yeah. I think a slate works both ways. I think there's a good thing in that if everyone agrees a certain view, you can translate that across in policy along your whole slate. That might work well next year. It's quite a lot of negativity that comes out of this. Is that quite disappointing, do you think? I think so, and it feels a bit more like a competition between groups rather than actually like promoting themselves to us. Obviously, if you're on your own, it's more difficult, but perhaps you have to find ways to be more distinctive, and that forces you to think hard, and that can be a good thing as well. So results are announced tomorrow. Are you excited about it? Um, I am, yes, yeah, because yeah, it will put an end to all of the campaigning, and it will put an end, to, and it will put an end to the, I don't know, the the small town moaning that's yeah. going on. So obviously, do you feel like you know the SU is going to make an impact on ne next year, and you you kind of want to have a say in who runs it for your final year? I really hope they do make an impact. Yeah, I think the election is really important. People go out and they vote for people they think will represent their views properly, and uh, will be here to represent the generations that come. All going very well, I think. It's nice to see a good turnout and I'm hoping that we'll get a good set of people in for next year. Well, it's important for you to make your voice heard and vote in the Student Union elections. Make sure you cast your vote online at qmsu.org forward slash elections. If you think Batman doesn't exist, you're wrong. He does. And if you think he lives in Gotham, wrong again. He lives in Bradford.
A man dressed as the Dark Knight handed in a wanted criminal into a police station in West Yorkshire. Batman marched a 27-year-old man wanted for handling stolen goods and fraud into custody before disappearing back into the night. And yesterday Batman revealed himself to the world. His name is Stan Warby and he's a Chinese takeaway driver. Warby was shocked by the worldwide coverage of his heroism, admitting that he only dressed as a caped crusader as a joke. Not a fan of fame, he's happy to hang up his cape and continue life as a normal man. It's going to be a dark night for Bradford from now on. <laughs> As always, we like to hear from you, so tweet us at QMTV channel or get in touch over Facebook. Thanks for watching Bloody Mary. We'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>